Get to see the camera people. <laughs> great, Tony. Feet. Oh, oh, you're great. Okay. okay, okay. So we're live now? Yep. Everything? All right, very cool. Um, well, I'd like to welcome all you good folks out there to our comparative witchcraft study group. But as we are still amongst the Yule season, I decided again to go off the beaten path. In other words, not quite follow the lesson plan. But uh, last week we did have a bit of a Yule special, and you saw me in my goofy robe. And we discussed um, the practices of Yule um, with uh, Reverend Don and uh, a couple of other guests that were with us, uh, semi-regular study group goers. And so this week I thought I'd take um, a little bit of time and sort of share um, well, what the holiday season is. Um, and I'm going to, since it is a, in the spirit of comparative witchcraft, to explore it from a different point of view. Well, to explore it from, to explore it from a, a couple of different points of view. And also, this will be an opportunity to really be engaging. So everyone out there, please do share your opinions constantly throughout this um, particular study group, and we hope to spurn some sort of a discussion. Okay. So, as we all know, especially from what we learned last week, that you'll is a time of spreading cheer. Now, why are we spreading cheer? Well, we're spreading cheer because it is, it is still uh, the, the dark half of the year, moving into the light half of the year, but it's getting very obviously, to, especially for those of you in New England and other parts of the world like it, it gets very, very cold. And um, at, at one time, it was just a horrible time to try and survive. Uh, many people would, would end up passing away due to the elements, uh, particularly in, in, in medieval times and what have you. So it was, it was the last great time to share some cheer, um, to, to have a great big group of people gather together for feasts and celebration and, uh, and well, gift giving, and especially within their means as best that they could. So through that, let's see, let's explore a couple of different realms. Now, in paganism um, and in witchcraft and the like, we do again recognize the solstice as the time of year in which the sun is reborn and the, uh, through the Oak King, the young god, and that the, the, the old god, the Holly King, is defeated and killed um, to give way to the young god. So, we see the whole idea that the cycle, at least of the god, begins again here. And the holiday prior to Yule is that of Samhain, which is indeed the witch's new year. So, we notice ourselves getting out of this dark half of the year and moving into the light to, rebirth, to, to, to prepare for the next harvest, for things to be reborn, and everything to come anew. Okay, but now, but where does the where where does the cheer come from? Why why do we need to spread so much cheer? Well, with the end of the Holly King comes the comes the end uh, of well, in my opinion, every once in a while, you see the Holly King's demise also being the end of 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 high magic in a sense because he is indeed a sorcerer archetype. And we explored some archetypes a couple of weeks ago. Um, or I might be getting confused with the first degree, but what, what have you. Um, so the Holy King is indeed a representation of Santa Claus. But which is a very interesting thing to think about, because popularly Santa Claus is this big jolly fella who, um, who around this time of year, gives the gifts and everything else, St. Nicholas, all of that. Um, 
but we have the Holly King being killed by the Oak King. I mean, Santa Claus is not killed by Tropical Larry, for instance. Uh, he, he is everlasting. He just happens to only work during the winter. So that's a couple of different points of view of the Holly King. Although also sometimes, yes? Well, couldn't we see that um, Santa Santa's holiday being overtaken with like the, the earlier part of the December season with um, the celebrations of Christmas with um, Jesus as being the new Oak King or Baby New Year or any of those things? Yeah, that's actually an interesting way of looking at it when you have the old Saint Nicholas all of a sudden uh, being, uh, giving the gifts, spreading the cheer, and all of a sudden we have the Christian view of, 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 of Jesus, of the Messiah, being born, um, which, will, which would indeed be an idea of rebirth, uh, God being reborn, uh, and then coming back to the earth and, uh, and starting this whole new cycle. Which actually brings me to something. It, it, we're comparing, I mean, we're getting into a bit of a comparative religion type of thing, but uh, why not? Um, Christmas itself is, uh, is well, let's look at it, Christ Mass, the Feast of Christ almost, in a sense. Um, being reborn, but even still you have the idea of the secular New Year, um, and some of the ideas of Father Time and Baby New Year. Uh, Baby New Year being born to, to start the year, and the old year being represented by the wizened Father Time. So it's it, it's a it's a time of old passing into new, and there are different views of this that hopefully we've tried to cover. And I wonder if there's anybody out there that has anything to add to the idea of uh, old giving way to the new or anything really. That was a fun noise. Third does my head. Um. But you can also see that, that, that this time of year is a time of reflection. And seeing as it is a time of reflection, uh, the, 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 the old year giving way to the new year, we can say that it's a good time to rethink and reevaluate. Um, and hopefully did this this So like um how we have on New Year's, the New Year's resolutions, things that are going to change for the New Year. Precisely. Things are going to change for the New Year and all of that uh, is necessary. But what, what I wanted to do uh, right now, since you are starting to talk about how the New Year works, um, is to share a sort of a, a sort of a personal, personal thing, and that I encourage everyone out there to also share their stories, and hopefully we can talk about them a little bit. Um, well, um, as some of you may know, I'm a little bit new to the Salem area and also to the Witch School community. Um, and I've been given a great bit of opportunity to come here and, and lead this particular study group. Um, however, we have been really lax for the past couple of weeks. Hopefully it'll change after the new year, New Year's resolution, get a bit more um, focused. Nestor says hi. Hello to Nestor. Um, but as a personal sort of thing, I noticed myself doing a lot of reflection because towards the end of this year I've been giving, given all these great opportunities coming here to work, coming here to, to meet all of you and uh, be able to lead a study group that's hopefully doing some good. Um, as, well as, as well as the vlogs that we have planned for the next year is a way to look forward and continue on with the new plans and new teachings. Um, and personally I have, I have come to find a bit of a new family. Not that I've left my old one, but I have gone ahead and, and created a circle of friends here in this area that have also given me these opportunities that I'm able to go with. So why do I tell this particular story? Well, not only is, is, is Yule a time of new beginnings, but it's also a time to give thanks for the things that, have, that are ending, that have helped you to come to the place where you are right now. And I would uh, like to thank, firstly, all of you that support our study groups, certainly here, that give us the opportunity to share this information with you and actually have a bit of pagan fellowship with you. Gives us all good cheer and is a, is a wonderful gift for us in the old season. Um, 
to receive your support um, and interest and also for us to give you um, hopefully a bit of entertainment even if it's just my stumbling over my words as I'm doing here but regardless uh, so I, want, I wonder if there's anybody out there that would like to share anything in particular or if our camera person would like to share anything in particular about the coming of the new year um, if not you don't have to just thought I'd take it in that direction well one of the things that I always celebrate um, my family's big on throwing parties mm -hmm. and so every year uh, my mother would have a Christmas party and have all of her friends from work over around Christmas time and uh, my little sister would have a New Year's Eve party around the New Year's um, which unfortunately left me with kind of a, a dearth of holidays, of winter holidays to center a holiday around. <laughs> so I decided to do an epiphany party. Oh, interesting. And epiphany is actually um, an interesting little holiday. It's <coughs> 12 days after Christmas, which is where we get the 12 days of Christmas song. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, because you start giving gifts on Christmas, kind of like the Hanukkah, you start giving gifts on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. and you give them for the next 12 days until Epiphany. Mm -hmm. And Epiphany is when the wise men are thought to have gotten their way to Jesus. Oh, sometimes they call it Little Christmas? Yep. Yep, yeah, okay. And this is actually when um, Orthodox Christians, like such as Greek and Russian Orthodox, oh, will give yes. gifts. Yes, yes, yes. And so, um, it usually falls on about the 6th of January. Mm -hmm. uh, so I try to have a party around the 6th of January every year, uh, the closest Saturday to it, because, you know, people can get off work and come. Mm -hmm. And so that's my little tradition. I've been doing that for seven years now. That's very interesting. Now, what brought you to, to the idea of Little Christmas and the orthodoxy behind it? I mean, I suppose there's not too much orthodoxy behind it as far as your party is concerned, but maybe there is. Um, what brought you to Epiphany? Um, have the epiphany about epiphany. Really, it was just the fact that I didn't have any other holiday to do anything on. Mm -hmm. And it was either that or Hanukkah. And I really have no attachments to Hanukkah, having never been Jewish. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's, yeah. But uh, I was Roman Catholic mm -hmm. for... My, I was raised Roman Catholic, and I had a, a brief stint in my teenage years, being very, you know, good Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. and practiced a lot, and did the whole Advent and such and such. I was the complete opposite of you for a while, because I don't know if, if any of you pop culture fans out there follow Seinfeld, but I was a celebrate. I was a uh, person who celebrated the great holiday of Festivus, which I be which I believe falls on December thirteenth. So happily, I've missed it and forgot about it this year. Uh, I say happily because technically it's a fairly negative holiday, and we all gather around the Festivus pole and air our grievances. Um, although at the same time, it's a nice time to have to have maybe a group of friends get together, or even do it with your family, and just do the funny little things that, that bother you. You're all in good hearted, like you know, like oh, the silly jokes you tell all the time, you know, or funny. But it's at the same time to hear about, you know, maybe little different things you can change about yourself. At least that's the way we looked at it: is, is, is people giving constructive criticism as opposed to standing around the festivist pole digging into one another. But. Um, it's kind of funny how I bring up Festivus right now because it, as it is supposed to be a season of cheer, Festivus is a good way to stick it to them and say this is a season not so much of cheer. <laughs> so, you know, it's the friends and I used to preach the old idea of might be Merry Christmas to you and Happy Hanukkah to someone else, but ladies and gentlemen, it's Happy Festivus to the rest of us. Right? Although finally in my case, it's Merry Yule, uh, which I'm happy to say uh, has brought me with better stories. <laughs> um, Festivus. Yeah, Festivus is kind of awful, isn't it? it sounds pretty awful. We actually picked up a uh, in school the, the the horrible metal chairs we had. One of the one of the legs fell off it, so there was this jagged metal thing we used to hold and stand around and hammer oh, our Christmas pole. <laughs> it's a horrifying Christmas pole. It is a scary Christmas pole that we had. Um, were you the goth kids? No, we weren't. We are jagged we, pieces of metal. We were. Did they, did they we look like were, your souls? We were the horrible, misanthropic old men inside young bodies. Um, is what we were. And actually, one of us is Jewish, and I, I wish him a happy Hanukkah as that comes festival light. He's a bit more cheerful now that he's come out of the closet. So, <laughs> uh, so um, believe me, that is not meant to be offensive. He's 
he's much happier now that he's done that. Um, but I hope through this kind of goofy little relaxed study group, my goal is to actually give the lightheartedness of the season and show that it's just okay to sit down and have a nice con a conversation about whatever. Uh, but again, after our Yule break, we'll come back and do legitimate lesson plan again. But there's also a little bit of a little bit of the tradition around uh, Christmas of the Christmas cookies, or sometimes the passing of the fruit cake. Um, happily, I'm more familiar with the Christmas cookies. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine dropped off at work a nice big tub of cookies that her mother had made, and. Um, Passing around the Christmas cookies in the various shapes of hearts and trees and snowflakes and everything else is just another reminder that, that well, the tree itself, uh, seeing as it is mostly an evergreen, they are forever green no matter what holiday and what um, time of year it is. So it's a time to recognize that life is never ending and continues on and on. The snowflake, winter, but to say that snowflake is not necessarily bad, you know, it could actually be a, a nice piece of art and good cheer. Seeing the single snowflake, as opposed to a big pile of snow outside your front window, um, seeing that single snowflake actually reminds us of the beauty um, of, of what we have and what we had and what is to come. At least that's how I interpret it. And the heart, just to spread a little love. Um, which is always good about a chilly time of year. I'm just going to wonder if there's anybody out there chatting about anything that I have said or they'd like to bring up. No. Not yet. No goodness. Uh, uh, every I would like to add something about the cookies. My family is big on the cookies. Mm -hmm. So every year we would make the, the sugar cookies and all in different shapes and everything like that for Santa Claus. And uh, just last year, my, um, my boyfriend and his sons and I celebrated Christmas together. Mm -hmm. And it was this small child's first time baking cookies. Oh, really? And I don't, I don't do that from a tube stuff. <laughs> it's always from scratch. Always from scratch. Yep. And so um, this little kid it was his first time um, making cookies from scratch. He'd never done it before. He's in kindergarten now, and it just surprised me that he'd never done it. Mm -hmm. So I, I taught him. We taught him how to measure. Um, he broke the eggs, mostly successfully. Um, <laughs> it's difficult when you do it for the first time. It is. Um, and his hands weren't quite big enough to grasp them. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was It was really great giving that tradition to the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a lot more messy than I remember it being. He had to he would, he would stick his hands in all the ingredients. <laughs> um, and then so at the end of the end, instead of having him stir it up with a fork, I just had him mash the dough together with his hands, and then he got to put all the cookies on there. It was great. That is funny. That, that, well, that's a big part of the season. The season is rife with tradition. The idea of coming together for a Christmas goose, for instance, or whatever, or a Christmas ham. Oh, good lord, the Christmas ham! I went oh, to a ham. barn. Yeah, I went. I went to a barn party um, a couple of well, about a week ago. Um, yeah, a barn where I ride in North Reading. And it's actually the first time I, I was invited to this particular event, so we decided to go. And um, it, 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 well, it's a tradition that they always do. We go to, to the tack room right by the barn, so it's outside. It's a little chilly, and uh, Apache, who is a paint horse, is dressed up as Santa Hoss. So that's a new tradition. There's a horse, you stick a Santa hat on, he gets grumpy about it as well. His response was to make a mess so in front of the door. But anyway, we won't get into that. But um but inside, inside of course, we have we have the, the, the celebrated festive Christmas punch and all of the and somebody decided to bring in a Christmas ham of about the size Well, it would probably fit sitting in the chair that I'm sitting in right now. It's a ridiculous size Christmas ham and everybody devoured the thing. So I think another tradition out there is actually the celebrating of the Christmas ham. But really, also, really, any Christmas feast. True, true enough, true enough. And um, but at this particular party as well, we can see the old giving way to the new. As I did not really know a great many people at this party, and there were a couple other people that really didn't know each other. So Lane, who was the hostess of this party, uh, decided to play this game that uh, that when you're on when you're on the trail with a group of people you haven't met yet, 
to go out and play this game. We all stood in a circle in the in the in the tack room, and we played the game. Of we would we would we would say, um, I'm such and such. You know, I'm Alfred, and this is and this is that, and this is that, and this is that. And in the circle, you would have to memorize all the people's names ahead of you in order to get to know one another. So a lot of new friendships were made at this particular party, which gives way to see in the future. You know, new friendships for the new year. Little interesting thing, and it's apparently a tradition that they do every year to get to know the new faces at the barn. But only at Christmas, oddly enough. So that's a bit of a cheerful thought. But as we continue into the new... Um, I'd like to say I think we've, we've just about exhausted the conversation we can for the night. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for, for, for giving us a wonderful first couple of months with the, with the Comparative Witchcraft Study Group. And we will get right back to the grind. Um, Next Wednesday. Hmm? Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday? The, a week from A week from, a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. Really? Tomorrow's Wednesday. Yes, okay. So in a week from tomorrow, we'll have a little extra day to repair. We'll get back right into the grind with uh, cosmic and earth energies. So uh, thank you. Oh all. no, you're you're still on Tuesdays, but study groups in general start again next Wednesday. Study groups in general start again on next Wednesday. It's also our Yule break next week, though. For for, for yes. This. So not tomorrow Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow starts our Yule break. Mm -hmm. So then for a week, we'll we won't have any study groups. Yes. And then next Wednesday, we'll start again with our um, room group. So, to hear that again, uh, the t tomorrow starts our Yule, tomorrow, you said? Tomorrow. Tomorrow starts our Yule break, so it will be, we'll be, we'll be dark for about a week. And next Wednesday, come back with Fox's room group. And then the Tuesday afterwards, I will be back with you with Cosmic and Earth Energies. We'll be right back to the grind there. Uh, with a couple of lesson plans under our belts, so we're not as scattered as we have been. Um, so, uh, I wish all of you a Merry Yule and a Blessed New Year. And for those of you that celebrated, a Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah if there's anybody out there in the Jewish crowd. Happy Holidays in general. Let's be political correct, politically correct. But of course, if you like what you see here, do indeed like this video and you will see more of the same um, for the study groups. So until... Two weeks from now, may you bless it be.